Good morning. Today is uh, June the 24th. It's currently 6, 10 a.m. Um, well, here in California, Southern California, it's 6, 10 in the morning. Uh, my wife and I just did this, uh, read this proverb of the day, and it was a really good proverb. So I feel led to um, put this on our YouTube channel. So whoever who's gonna, whoever's watching this video, I uh, hope you're blessed by it. So Proverbs 24 verse 1 says, Be thou, be not thou envious against evil men, <coughs> excuse me, neither desire to be with them. For their hearts studieth destruction, and their lips talk mischief. Through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increaseth in strength. For by, for by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opened he openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them at that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? And shall not he rend to every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And the expectation shall not be cut off. That word expectation means your hope shall not be cut off. You keep, up, keep wisdom with godly wisdom. So my son, eat thou honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. With that word hope again. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man For a just man, the righteous man, lawful, one who's keeping the commandments and being a doer of the word, may fall as seven times. And rise up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when, the, when thine enemy falleth. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth. Do not be cheerful when your enemy falls. And let not thy heart be glad. When he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and, it, and it displeases him, and he turns away his wrath from that man. Fret not thyself because of evil men. Do not be jealous of them, or... Um, desire to be with them. 
neither be thou envious at the wicked. Jealous of them. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear the Lord, thou the Lord and the King, and meddle. Meddle is to um, exchange with them, engage um, and meddle with them, occupy your time with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knoweth the ruin of them both? These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall arbor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be, de shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. That's talking about standing for, for righteousness and correcting um, and judging our brothers and sisters that are, um, that are being uh, compromisers and that aren't standing for truth and righteousness and being loving. But we, we need to rebuke them so that not so only that a blessing will come upon us, but that they in hopes that they will um, wake up from their slumber and their delusion and come into the knowledge of, of what it really means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth the right answer. Prepare thy work without and prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field and afterwards build thy house. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause and deceive not with thy lips. So we need, we can't, that means we're not supposed to be um, speaking uh, evil or speaking um, what we think when we don't, when we're not sure of that it's true or not against our neighbor. If it means that much to you, go to your neighbor and ask, ask him or, you know, if, in, in love, hoping that, that you'll be able to witness to him the oracles of Christ. Say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. That's the Old Testament, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. But Jesus says that we're to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. So he's saying here not, say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. Um, that's because that's worldly. That's stuff that people in the world do that aren't delivered and aren't, aren't saved and born again. They, they, they try to get payback and they try to, you know, um, I'm, honestly, I'm going to speak on what I know is true. Um, you know, a lot of people, they, they're just delusional. They don't know. Um, they don't know the difference. And what happens is when you're delivered, when you're, when you're, when you're saved and you're born again, um, see the Bible says that there is no, that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So, um, and that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So if you're, um, having stuff being done to you, uh, I'm not talking about little stuff. I'm talking about if, if physical or or there's weird stuff being happening to you and all that, and you don't understand what's happening. 
Well, you need to take a look at at your life, and because you know that there's a saying in the world that is true. It says, um, "Well, you know, um, my my grandma used to say it says, tell me who you hang around with, and I'll tell you who your friend.' Uh, those birds of a feather flock together. Um, if you're if people are doing things to you that are harming or harming to you or or whatever, say that maybe it's you're you're hanging around an, an area that you shouldn't be at. Um, you're hanging around people you shouldn't be hanging around with. And God's just trying to get your attention and telling you to to move or stop hanging around those people or those crowds or that part of the city or association, right? We you're guilty by association, so. Um, our lives should be so um, that people would. The Bible says that even even our enemies makes he, he, his enemies even close to us. So when you're walking in love, people aren't going to want to hurt you or going to want to do bad to you. When you're when you're being a witness, people aren't these things aren't happening to people that are that are disciples. That let me put it that way. These things are happening to people that are double-minded, that, that don't have any wisdom, that don't have any discernment. You need to have discernment. You need to have wisdom. Um, you need to be walking in love. You know, those things so that this doesn't happen. Um, we shouldn't be having people, you know, getting us angry to where we're going to respond in, in the way that they they did to get revenge on them because that's that's not what being a disciple is about I went by the field verse 30 of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding and lo it was all grown over with thorns and nettles and covered the face thereof in the stone wall therefore was broken down Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. That's what we need to be doing with the word of God. We need to be um, considering it well. Looking on it and receiving instruction. Not only, um, you know, instruction is, is discipline and rebuke. We have to let the word disciple dis discipline us and rebuke us and chastise us and and give us because uh, there's warnings in there of how to restrain ourselves from things that um and to check check ourselves and the, 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 the doctrine of christ is um we need to be know our words so we could differentiate between false doctrine and true doctrine um because true doctrine is is that we would um, be holy for the Lord is holy. We have to be holy and have integrity and um, not being uh, part of the world and doing doing things that are of the world and talking of the world, talking the old way we used to talk and um, even the tones that we speak in. We have to be, our voices have to be our, our, our instruments of righteousness, our mouths are instruments of righteousness. Everything that we, our bodies, our, our temples are instruments of righteousness. Um, we need to be, be, be willing to hear the voice of God um, for what it is that is our, um, our calling. You know, he's, He's called us all to do different separate things to build the kingdom. And we need to know what, what it is that we've been called to do. Um, and more importantly, what we've been called to do is um, we've called to, to we've been called to love, to love others and to forgive others and to teach others the, the ways of righteousness and holiness and the fear of God. Because the Bible says that by the fear of the Lord that men depart from evil. That's the reason why the world is not 
um, it has not departed from evil. That's why there's so much sin in the camp. Because um, they don't teach. They're, 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 they're the people that are teaching them. Um, teaching them the Bible. Are not teaching them the fear of the Lord. They're not teaching them to have the fear of the Lord. They're not teaching them what it is to fear God. Um, what, what it is to. You know, to deny the flesh, to, to, you know, we don't just pick up the cross and follow Jesus on Sundays. We, our cross is, you know, sure, our, our burden is, is in his, you know, it's, he's, the Bible says to come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There, there's times for rest. There's times for peace. There's times for war. There's times for rebuke. There's times for, um, for everything, it's like the, just like in Ecclesiastes says, but we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost and and hearing the voice of God to understand and to discern what time and place are we going to um, respond in the way that God would have us respond. Um, in other words, you know, this morning I'm trying to I'm share sharing my heart um, with you. Uh, the best I know how to this the word of God what what we're reading or we're looking at right here um and but there's also times that you're gonna hear me talk about um you know that you need that you know there's gonna be correction there's gonna be discipline the word the word disciplines us the word rebukes us corrects us when we need to be corrected and we need to be correctable we need to be um teachable. Uh, and more importantly, we need to walk in more love because, um, you know, especially in the times that we're in right now, you know, after just coming through what we came through with the, with the virus and coronavirus and all that, we have to be, um, loving and we're not going to agree with everybody's doctrine. We're not going to agree with certain things and ways and all that because everybody's been taught differently. Um, just because they they do things a little bit different doesn't mean that they that they're not born again. It doesn't mean that they, that they don't love the Lord. It's just that they maybe they don't know any better. Um, and that doesn't mean that we're supposed to go tell all everybody that we know. Hey, this is not the right way. This is the right way. This and that. No, there's the time to do all that. You know, we need to pray for those people that don't know. Um, don't know and that are that are you know maybe compromising or. You know, we don't want to hurt. We don't want to. We don't want to offend them because if we offend them, then they're not going to want to hear from us. <laughs> they're not going to want to hear from us when we want to correct them. So we want to we want to gain their trust and their and, and their friendship, and they're going to want to make sure that you know that they're seeing fruit on our trees before we before we go and try to preach to them. So we have to be bearing fruit worthy of repentance ourselves if we want people to hear us and understand what we're saying so anyways i just pray um that you would learn to uh you would learn to hear from the voice of god so i just pray father right now in jesus name um that all who would be listening to this uh video that you would um grant them wisdom godly wisdom that they would i pray that you would um that you would have a desire and a zeal to read read the word for yourself and to gain instruction and wisdom from the word and not from man um that you would learn to stand up for righteousness and holiness be a light on your heel wherever you're at wherever you're living that you would be a light of love, a beacon of hope to those who are in your community, that you would ask the Holy Spirit right now, do I need to forgive anybody? Is there anybody that I need to forgive? And if there is, just ask the Holy Spirit, ask God to, to give you that grace to be able to forgive them. And as as he, as he grants you the, the grace 
um, and takes that sorrow, that burden from you, I pray that you would truly, truly, truly be a man or a woman that would stand up for righteousness and and put away the things of the world, put away books that are in your home, put away uh, television shows that you watch that are portraying lust and perversion or or um, seduction or pride and anger and violence and all these things that that are, are doorways and gateways for the enemy to um, to come in through your ears and your your eyes and ultimately um, take away your inheritance the inheritance that God's given you God has inherited you've been inherited you've inherited um, you've inherited the kingdom of God as a disciple as a, as a man and woman of, of Christ but in order to keep your in order to keep your um, your inheritance, you have to, you have to remain in Him. You have to um, continue every day to to do the Word of God, to be a doer of the Word, to be reading your Bible, to to be living it, to be living it out, to be casting out every day, to be praying for others, to being, um, you know, there's so many ways you can be used of the Lord. Um, and it's not just on your outreach event that you go to at church. It's not just your once a month event that you go out and feed the poor. I'm talking about every day, whether it be at home, it starts at home with your family, with your wife, with your husband, with your, with your kids, your parents. Sometimes it may be flipped around. Maybe you're born again and your parents aren't, you're living at home. And we have to be, it's our, our Actions are more, actions are, uh, what's this, there's a verse that actions are greater than our words, right? So we have to be living it. Our, we, the best sermon is, is, is a life that's, a best sermon is a life that's dedicated, fully surrendered to God. That's, um, that's, that's just being, being like Jesus. We have to be like Jesus. We have, God has come down. God has allowed Jesus to come down here to teach us how to how to live our lives how, in all different aspects. Jesus went through everything that we have went through and greater. And if we just would respond like him and in times of trial, in times of despair, where did, what did he do? He, he didn't run to the world. He didn't want put on a TV show or put on a movie or... He he went he 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 went to be a, alone with the Father. He went to hear from God. He he sweated. He was sweating tears, sweating blood, because his his flesh was probably just so. He he knew that he had to, he had to die. He knew that he he was he was ultimately born. He was ultimately born to die, and to surrender his life for his Father. He was willing to do it at all costs. That's why he said, are you willing to follow me? Are you willing to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me and forsake all to follow me and to be a, to be a disciple? Many said they were. Many came. He had hundreds of disciples, but not. He said they all, they all, they all turned from him. They all turned on him. They all, in some way, shape, or form, let him down. And he still went to the cross. And you're gonna have people that are gonna like are gonna let you down. They're, your family members, your loved ones are gonna hurt you and let you down and deceive you. And there's just all kinds of stuff that the enemy's gonna use them to to bring you shame or to take the word away from your heart. But we don't have to. We don't have to um, surrender to. We don't have to surrender to our flesh. We don't have to surrender to the easy way out. The easy way, the only way out, the only way to heaven is through Jesus, which means that we have to be crucified with Christ, be risen again with him. 
it's no longer about us. It's no longer about you. It's no longer about me. What I want, me, 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 and I, I, I is no more. When we're disciples of Jesus, we are surrendered. We, you can't kill what's already been dead. We're dead. We're dead to the world. The, the enemy has no power over us. He can't do nothing to us when we're surrendered to God. When we're, when we're, we're walking in the flesh. We're not walking in the flesh. We're walking in the spirit. The Bible says that sin no longer has dominion over us. Therefore, the devil has no longer has dominion over us or power over us. Why? Because we're surrendered. We're already, we're dead already in our trespass. We're dead. We're dead to our in our trespasses. We are. We're dead. We're cleansed. We're made new. We're righteous before God. We're standing holy and blameless before our King. And if you remain that way, you remain in Christ. You remain in the vine. He will fight your battles. He will, you will have to go. He will take you to places that you can't even imagine. And he'll do things for you. He'll provide for you. He'll heal you. He'll set you free. And then you'll start healing and setting free your, your loved ones. And your family is going to get delivered and set free. But it starts with us. We have to be the example. We have to be the ones that say, look, maybe it's not everybody else's fault that I am the way I am. It's Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's the decisions that I've made. Maybe I need to go get deliverance. Maybe I need to see, maybe, maybe I need to see if there's any demons in me. If there is. Maybe this maybe this deliverance thing is real. Let me try it out. Well, what it, what's it going to hurt? Right? But you have to meet the qualifications to 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 have to be to receive deliverance. You can't do deliverance. You you can't get deliverance and have the demons cast out of you if you're not surrendered to God, if you're not born again, if you're not willing to sacrifice your your life and give away the things that are displeasing to the Lord. We have to be willing to forsake all, all, everything, everybody, children, mothers, fathers, daughters, wives, husbands, to, to follow Jesus. If they don't want to follow Jesus, we keep following Jesus. We don't allow our loved ones to, to bring us out of, of our calling of what God has called us to and great has called us for. And as and, and 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 the more you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he's gonna your anointing is gonna get more and more and more and more and more. And you'll be able to cast out demons. You'll be able to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Those are just byproducts of righteousness and holiness. And the fear of the Lord. We have to have godly sorrow. We have to be sorrow, sorrow, more than just sorry for, for what we've done to bring, to bring um, shame upon our our King. Our our lives are, should be instruments of righteousness. Our we should be, everything that we do, in life, people, the world should see us. And know us as disciples, as men and women that that are not okay with sin, are not okay with drinking, are not okay with smoking, are not okay with smoking weed, are not okay with, with listening to rap music, are not okay with uh, perverted uh, uh, talking and you know, worldly uh, discussions and these types of things. We have to, uh, res we have to be clothed in righteousness. And how we are clothed in righteousness is by remaining in Him. It's His righteousness. It's not ours. It's not ours. He's given it to us, but it comes at a cost. It costs us our life. It costs us our life. 
It's a supernatural thing. The Holy Spirit is supernatural. It's supernaturally, I'm speaking to you by the Holy Spirit. Supernaturally, we have faith to lay hands on the sick and, then that they, and know that they will recover. Supernaturally, we cast out devils because we know that we know that the power of uh, we we know the power of the name of Jesus Christ, and we know what the Word of God says that we're commanded in Mark sixteen seventeen to cast out demons. That's 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 the first commandment we're, that all believers are to do. He says, "All you will cast out demons in my name, all who believe." So if you believe in Jesus, you need the first person you need to, to cast demons out of is yourself. So that you can learn to cast demons out of other people. So I just want to leave you with this, knowing that um that Jesus loves you, you God loves you, and um and wants the best for you and and it's up to you. It's up to me how we're going to live our lives today. It's up to us what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, what we're going to look at, what we're not going to look at, what, what, how, much are, how much of the world are we going to put up with. So I just pray that God would, um, that the fear of God would be upon you, upon you today and that you would learn to draw from, from the well of life Drink from the well of Jesus. Drink from his well. Please drink from the well of Jesus. He, there's enough water. There's enough water and food. He has food and water that only he can give. You can't get, you can't, you can't feed from another well and think that you're going to feed from the same well of Jesus. We have to go to the well that's pure and holy. When we drink from his well, then you will see change. Then you will see um, favor and, and all the things that you want. Everybody wants something from God. But you know what God wants from you? He wants obedience. God wants you to be obedient. You might, everybody wants, wants, give me, give me, give me, God, give me this, give me that. I want this, help me, help me, help me. But they're not willing to surrender and be obedient to what the word says so please fear god don't fear man fear god who cares what man thinks because ultimately in the long run you don't have to answer to man when you die when you die every man on earth will have to answer to god will be standing before god you're not going to have your mom your dad your brother, your sister there with you to help you. You're going to be standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's going to say, why should I let you into my kingdom? Oh, because I was a good person. No, that's not good enough. Oh, because I went to church. No, that's not good enough. Oh, because I tithe, I help the poor. No, that's not good enough. The only answer that you will that will allow you into heaven when he says, Why should I let you into my kingdom? The only answer is gonna be because I was a doer of your word. And if you truly were a doer of his word, day in and day out, he will he will say, Well done, my good and faithful servant, and, and you'll be let in. So please be a hearer, be a hearer and a doer of the word. I love you, and more importantly, God loves you. Have a good day.